Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kimberly Joy, and I thank you for tuning in to the Kimberly Joy Show. Before I go any further, let me begin with prayer. God, I love you. God, I thank you. I praise you, God, for who you are. God, you are everything, God. God, you are God alone, and, and I adore you. I worship you, God. God, I thank you, God, for this broadcast. I thank you, God, for everyone who is tuned in right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I pray a special blessing, God, for every mother, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, God, that you meet their needs right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that as we approach Mother's Day this Sunday, God, God, that every mother, God, will receive receive what she needs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. And I'm not just talking to those who have biological children, but to all mothers. If you are a mother or if you've been a mother to anyone, then I am talking to you too. So happy Mother's Day. And I want you to know, mothers, that you are appreciated. Yes, you are appreciated for who you are and for everything that you do. Now, I have an encouraging word for all mothers today. God says this. God says, I see you. Yes, God sees you. He sees your love. He sees your dedication. He sees your hard work. He sees how hard you work at, at your regular job. And maybe you work two jobs. And then when you get off work, you come home and you work some more. You clean, you cook, you do the laundry. You, you help your children with their homework. You take your children to their different activities. God says, I see you. I see the sacrifices that you make on behalf of your family, the, the financial sacrifices, the sacrificing of your time, even sacrificing of your sleep. Let me give you an example. When, when my brother BJ was an infant, he was very sick. I mean, to the point where we almost lost him and, and he had to have surgery as an infant. Well, one night, and, and my mother testifies about this. He was just, he, he just didn't feel well at all and he couldn't sleep and he, and he just cried. And, and so my mom, she just stayed up with him and she rocked him and she prayed for him. My mother testifies that she literally stayed awake all night. She watched the sun come up, but see, that's what mothers do. That's what you all do. And God says, I see you. God says, I also see that you're tired. You're tired physically, mentally, emotionally, so much so that sometimes you just want to walk away from it all, uh, but you don't. You, you stay in there. You, you stick it out. So God says, let me refresh you. Yes, God wants to refresh you. Uh, and what does it mean to refresh? Refresh is to give new strength or, or to give new energy to, to revive, to restore. But in order for God to refresh you, you have to allow him to do it. In other words, God says, remember to take care of you. See, you're so busy taking care of everyone else and not just even your children, sometimes other people's children, sometimes extended, fa extended family members, your parents. You spend so much time taking care of everyone else that you forget about you. But you can't. You have to take time for you, mothers. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 10 say this. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Verse 9, you have six days each week for your ordinary work. Verse 10, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. Now, I see the Sabbath day serving two purposes. For one, it serves as a reminder that we are to honor God. See, we can get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of the day, even as believers in Christ. We can become so busy that, that we forget to, to just stop and just honor God, just worship God. So God says, just give me one day out of the week to do nothing but honor me. Now, in addition to that, I also believe that the Sabbath serves as a reminder for us to just rest. Yes, yeah, see, these bodies that we have, they're not perfect. They're not glorified bodies. And so our bodies break down. We get tired. Our minds get tired. And so God has established a day for us to just stop and just rest and just recuperate and just recover. But mothers, some of you, you don't rest. 
You don't, you, you don't take care of yourself. You just keep going and going and going because you think you have to. But hear what God is saying. Learning to rest can be a matter of life or death. Yes, it can be that serious. Let me tell you a story. About nine years ago, I received a phone call uh, one day. It was dur during the week at, um, in the afternoon. And it was my parents and they were calling to tell me to pray for my cousin that she had been rushed to the hospital. And so I did. I prayed and I prayed and, and I had this funny feeling. And, and I was waiting by the phone to hear from my parents again. And it, and it had been a while. And honestly, I was concerned. Well, my parents, they finally called me back to inform me that my cousin, who was only 52 years old, had passed away. And I tell you, I was devastated. Now, I won't go into everything that happened and, and what caused her death. But what we came to realize as a family is that my cousin didn't take care of herself like she should have. And frankly, she was tired. At the homegoing service, different individuals got up to just, you know, to just honor her and just talk about how wonderful she was. She was a devoted wife, a devoted mother. In fact, she raised five children. Now, by this point, they were all adults. She had a full-time job. And in addition to all that, she held, she held several duties at her church, as well as in the organization that her church belonged to. My cousin had done so much that, that I asked myself, I said, well, when did she sleep? When did she have time to sleep? Now, in my honest opinion, hear what I'm saying. My cousin was overworked and it took a toll on her health. Yeah. It, 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 you know, that's why God says that you have to rest because it can take a toll on your health. Again, it can be, it can be a matter of life or death. Here's a final thought, mothers. The best thing that you can do for your children is to take care of you. Yes, you. They need you. They need you to be healthy. They need you to be well. Now, here are a few tip, tips, excuse me, to help you. Number one, spend time with the Lord. And I mean really spend time with him, not just when you go to church, but really spend time in God's word and, and in prayer and in worshiping him. And in those moments, allow God to minister to you. Allow him to give you what you need. Let go of everything. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And God is the one who knows how to take care of you. Mothers, you also have to exercise. You have to eat right. You have to sleep. Yes, mothers, you have to get a good amount of sleep every night. You can even um, have a spa day, get your hair done, your nails done, get a facial, a massage, enjoy a weekend getaway. Now, if you say that you can't afford all that, then, then there are things that you can do for free, like, like go to the park and then enjoy, enjoy a good book. Take yourself out to dinner, go to the movies. But mothers, you've got to take care of yourselves. According to pediatrician, Dr. Kelly Ross, she says, and I quote, a mom who is well rested, eats a healthy diet, gets plenty of exercise, maintains close relationships with friends, and gets help when she realizes she isn't coping well, is far more equipped to be the best mother she can be than one who doesn't do those things. So, mothers, this Mother's Day, really enjoy your day and take care of you. Please remember this, you deserve it. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's broadcast. I pray this message has encouraged you. If you haven't been set free from your sins by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you can be set free right now. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Please repeat this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you confessing I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe you shed your blood on the cross and died for my sins. I believe you were buried and rose again so I could be free. Please forgive me for my sins and the life I have lived. I confess you, Jesus, as Lord and accept you as my own personal savior. According to the word of God, I am now saved. Hallelujah, I am free. 
If you don't have a church home, I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church. It will help you grow spiritually. You are more than welcome to visit our church. Power and Faith Ministries, Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Banks are the pastors. We are at 7044 Fairfield Business Center Drive, Fairfield, Ohio, 45014. Sunday School, 9 a.m. Sunday Service, 10 a.m. And Wednesday Bible Study, 7 p.m. You can catch the encore of my show on Saturdays at 6 p.m. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, please email me at Kim underscore joy 73 at yahoo.com. You may also follow the Kimberly Joy Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And I invite you to visit my blog at thekimberlyjoy.com. My personal motto is know yourself, be yourself, love yourself. And now, here's Yolanda Adams with Be Still. <laughs> 